Sustained stretch is the most appropriate technique to use when we have connective tissues that are involved as the primary tissue or the source tissue linked to a loss of extensibility in myofascial structures. So in normal muscle, there is a connective tissue framework around the muscle fibers. That, co that connective tissue framework can potentially limit muscle extensibility, but it's very difficult for that to happen in normal muscles. Beeman's research group in Germany have demonstrated that for a muscle and its connective tissue framework to stop you moving, so for a muscle's internal connective tissue framework to limit motion, a muscle has to elongate approximately 180% of resting length. Now, the muscle in the human body that can elongate the most is the hamstrings. Now, the hamstring muscles on full functional stretch, so with the knee fully extended and the rib cage resting on the thigh, can only increase its length to 140% of resting length. So the hamstring muscles, the muscle that can lengthen the most in the human body, can only lengthen 140% of resting length in the human body. So consequently, there is no muscle in the human body where its own internal connective tissue framework can limit range of motion. However, when there are primary connective tissue structures such as energy storage fascias, the iliotibial band, the thoracolumbar fascia, the ligamentum nuco, or the fascia nuco in the neck, the plantar fascia in the foot, the fascias of latissimus dorsi across into the upper chest and the rib cage. These energy storage fascias, if they've become short or lose extensibility, then the technique of choice to lengthen these structures is sustained stretch. Sustained stretch is most safely performed using limb load, that's body load and gravity. There are some concerns in some places about using forceful sustained stretch and its possibilities of affecting vascular perfusion of, of muscles and structures. But limb load and gravity is the safest way to do sustained stretch. The only time a muscle itself would have a connective tissue change is if there's been previous damage to the muscle, so there's been a hematoma, for example, and scarring within the muscle, then that connective tissue structure is now abnormal. That might, that might contribute to some loss of extensibility, we might need to use some direct force loading or sustained force loading or sustained stretch techniques to deal with that component. Also, the fascias that surround muscles in postural shortening may also lose extensibility and so sustained stretch techniques might be appropriate for the external fascias around muscles in postural length change. So sustained stretch is the technique of choice to use for connective tissue structures that can contribute to a loss of functional range of motion or extensibility that will mainly occur in energy storage fascias, fascias around muscles changing with postural control or postural lengthening, and, or, um, and also um, the scar tissue within muscles due to previous trauma.